Hi ladies and gents, welcome to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name's Gem and I am bringing you the next video in our Colouring for Beginners series. Today we are looking at limited colour palettes. Now for those of you that don't know, I'm pretty sure the title is self-explanatory, however I shall explain. A limited colour palette is when a picture is coloured in one particular hue, hello jock, and or a selection of colours that usually is kept to a bare minimum. Now you can stick with one colour and just use different shades or you can pick multiple colours and only use one or two shades for each of those colours and you can get some pretty nice results. On one hand it can simplify your colouring if you find a picture particularly overwhelming or you just don't know where to start. A limited colour palette can be really handy but you can also incorporate moods and feelings and themes and seasons in with that kind of thing. Um, one that's quite popular is using an autumn limited colour palette. So for example you might choose a brown pencil, a red pencil, an orange pencil and a yellow pencil and just colour the entire picture in those colours. So let's have a look at some examples and then we can gather our pencils and we can get going. To kick things off I wanted to show you some examples and the the one that always sticks out in my head is in my copy of Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. This was the very first adult colouring book I ever had and these are a couple of my limited palette pictures. There's these two here and these two here. Now I did these very, very early on in my colouring career before I'd learned a lot of techniques and things. And to this day, they are still some of my favourite pictures and ones that I'm proud of when I flick through this book. This is the simpler end of using a limited palette and this is what I'm going to start with today. And that's obviously for all you guys who are quite new to colouring and don't want to be too overwhelmed. So that's the kind of look we're going to go for to start with. So I'm just going to jump over now. We're going to be doing um, some of this limited colouring in Johanna Basford's newest book, which is World of Flowers. So I've just picked out a really simple page here, and it's this one here. I've picked this one deliberately because what it lets me do is I can show you different ways of using a limited colour palette, and we can do one in each of the circles. And if you're feeling adventurous after that, you can colour in the butterfly. <laughs> okay, so having a think about the colours that were involved in those animals in Enchanted Forest, what I have done is I have picked out two sets of same colour limited palettes. I have an orange set here which range from quite a yellowy orange down to quite a deep almost red orange or a burnt orange and I've deliberately picked out five pencils. With a design of this size, five colours is plenty. Um, you could probably even go down to four. And uh, for the one of the other ones, I've picked out a set of blues. And again, I've done the same thing. I've picked five pencils. If you had a larger image that you were working with, you could maybe stretch to six, but I wouldn't go more than six. So I've picked out all blues and all oranges. And I'm only going to use one set of pencils in each circlet. And that is how we're going to start off. And I'm going to do this in the same style as the animals in Enchanted Forest. So let's start with the orange pencils, just, just because why not? And what I am doing here is I am going to employ the one pencil gradient technique. And if you haven't seen that and you are really new to colouring, you can click in the card in the corner. And I'll also leave a link in the description to that video. It really is for people who are brand new to colouring. You, you'll pick it up as you go along here anyway if you're paying attention. <laughs> so don't worry about it too much if you don't want to go back and watch that. So what I'm going to think about first of all is there's quite a lot of different components here and the idea, because we're using all technically the same colour, we don't want two items next to each other that are the same colour. So we want to try and you know, have quite a lot of variation there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my palest, palest colour, which happens to be Jasmine and the Prismacolor pencils. You can use any set of pencils you want, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to use this for a background. So what that means is I'm actually removing that pencil from further use in most of the areas of the picture. So technically, I'm only going to have four pencils to play with, which again is still absolutely loads for an image this size. So I'm just going to put in a solid background here. Because we're against the white of the page on the outside of the circle, I feel it's kind of important to have a, you know, quite, quite a solid colour there to give us something that, you know, that's going to stand out. So I'm just going to do a couple of light layers. I'm just working in, in small light circles here. I'm not pressing very hard because I don't need to. 
so we'll just get this down real quick. It is good to practice flat colour sometimes and the best way to go about it is, as I said, just to work in layers. So keep a nice light hand, don't put too much pressure on your pencil and uh, if it's something you do struggle with, you can hold your pencil further up because it makes it a lot harder for you to press down the way on that pencil and quite often not so much when I'm colouring now because I have good quite pressure control but when I'm drawing I find that I hold my pencil quite far back so that is a little trick for you if you're new to colouring and you're struggling with pressing too hard down on your paper by building up layers it's a bit like painting a wall with emulsion the more coats you put on the much more even and solid the colour is going to be and the more vibrant it's going to be and whatever was underneath it before isn't going to show through. So that's the aim of the game. You do get a much better depth of colour and the colour looks a lot richer as well if you use you know several layers of pencil. So I'm just going to do this bit here and I'm going to go back over this now. I might have to have a little sharp I think. Incidentally, if you do have Prisma colours, I like to use uh, a Tagawa Multi Sharpener on setting number two. Depending on the number you pick gives you uh, a different length on and pointiness of your point. And with the Prisma colours, I find that a number two point, which is quite a short, fat and stubby point, it helps reduce break breakages with these pencils because they are quite prone to it. So I'm just going to go back over this here. And brighten this up a little bit. I see this is the only place in the picture where I will, you know, block colour, just one flat colour. But as it's the background, that is what I want to do. And what it's going to do for us is because we're going to be using one pencil gradients, which I'll show you in a minute, a one pencil gradient utilises the white of the paper. So we want that to stand out. So it's important that it has something to contrast against. So by putting this flat colour in in the background, it's just going to make those white areas pop out and it's going to make our work stand out. So you get the idea here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to speed up this vid this section of the video so that I have coloured the entire background. Otherwise, we could be here for some time and this could be quite a long video. I don't know if you can hear, I'm pretty sure you can hear that. There are hailstones the size of golf balls bouncing off my window. The joys of a Scottish winter. I did say this in one of my one of my videos quite recently, but the weather is horrendous. I've had to put my lamp on again, but it's the middle of the day. It is half past 12, as in half past 12 noon, and it is so dark outside. If I turn this light off, that's, uh, it's like, the, it's like the middle of the night. <laughs>
I'm going to take my remaining four pencils and if anyone is interested I have cadmium orange hue I don't know what number that is because it's been sharpened upside down I have yellow ochre which is PC942 I have orange good old plain orange which is PC918 and I also have Spanish orange which is one of my favorites out of the orange range which is PC1003 okay so what we're going to do is we are going to take one pencil at a time so I'm going to start with the cadmium orange just because it's the first one I have to hand and we're going to look at each of these things as individual components so this here is a flower which is perfectly obvious but when it comes to using our colors we need to think in units here so I'm going to start here and using a light hand I'm just going to build up some color at the bottom and as I come towards the top I'm going to let up till almost nothing in this corner and I'm just going to go back over it and do the same thing again all I'm doing is building up the layers of color here because we want it to look nice and rich we don't want it to look washed out like so so I'm just going to do that another couple of times get this really nice and bright and vibrant get us off to a good start with our limited palette okay that's looking reasonably good so and then just going to repeat the same thing on the next petal along so pressing quite heavy when I'm in at the base but not really heavy and as I'm coming up I'm just releasing the pressure on that pencil so that it becomes fainter and fainter and fainter and eventually when you get to the top there's hardly any colour at all compared to the base of the flower. So here we go again, same thing. I'm still working in circular motions even though I'm working on a, on a piece that's long and skinny. I am still trying to use my little circles and what by colouring in that circular motion it helps disguise the pencil lines. You know you don't have that sort of scratchy up and down movement. I'm going to show you in another piece of paper. If you colour in the same direction all the time and then you move on and do the next part and the next part you see that in the grain of the paper you actually can see all the strokes there's the end of one there and it just it doesn't it just doesn't look great at all it really doesn't so by doing this in circular motions you're kind of minimizing that you're never going to get rid of your pencil strokes completely and unless you blend or burnish out which I will do with in another video um, but you can minimize it by using that nice little circle motion where you know where, where you're able to fit the, the tip of the pencil and it's not always entirely possible so there we go I'm just doing this last part now Okay, there we go, so we have our first flower done. Now, the next step is to look at the things that are touching this flower. So we have this branch here. We have the buds on the branch and we also have the leaves touching. So we can't use the cadmium orange on those two items. So I'm gonna move that up out the way and I'm gonna pick out another two of the colors. So I'm gonna pick out the Spanish orange and the yellow ochre. Now the yellow ochre I am going to use on this leaf here and I'm going to start really dark down on this bottom edge and I'm going to let up as I go to the top exactly the same way as we did with these petals and I'm leaving white at the top there. If I zoom in a little bit you'll be able to see that a wee bit better I think. There you are. So I've left like a band of white at the top but because I've pressed quite hard down on this bottom edge you can see that it stands out quite well against a very similar coloured background so that's exactly what we're going for. That's what we want. When it comes to the actual stock itself although it's tucked in behind here it is all the one branch so I'm going to go ahead and use this pencil to colour in that whole branch. Now the actual branch itself you know you're probably not going to be able to do much with it because it is quite skinny. If you want to try and leave a tiny little bit of white then absolutely be my guest. I don't think I'll be doing much with that. <laughs> I'm just going to get that in there. You'll see more of it when you come down the, the ends of these stalks to these little buds. 
because I'm going to do them in exactly the same colour. Now I'm going to go for a sort of backward C shape here. And again, the same thing, I'm just gradating out to the white. So as I get further up, I'm just releasing the pressure on the pencil. So I'm starting with a medium pressure and then as I work my way over, I'm just pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. And that has given us a lovely one pencil gradient from the yellow through to the white of the paper. And I do say, if you've ever watched any of my other videos, in my colour alongs and colouring chats and things, I always say the white of the paper can be your friend. Not always, but in this instance we can use it to our advantage. And by using a, a limited colour palette, not only are you challenging yourself a little bit, but I think it actually makes things easier sometimes. It can be quite overwhelming picking out colours, uh, especially in, 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 you know, pieces like this that I've got quite a lot of detail in them. So I actually find using a colour palette makes things simpler rather than more difficult. I don't know if anybody else feels the same. Maybe it's just me. But Right, so that's me. I have coloured in that branch. Now I'm going to do the ends of these buds as well because to me that just seems to be part of the branch. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the buds down the bottom. So I'm starting, I'm leaning quite heavily in at the base there. And as I come towards where the actual petals are coming out the top of the bud. I'm just letting up that pressure a little bit. Like so. Now it's up to you how much of the white of the paper you leave. I wouldn't suggest leaving a lot just because it, if you leave a lot of white then it might look as if you've not really finished colouring the picture. <laughs> so that's just something to take into consideration. Okay, okay. So let's move on now. I am thinking that we can use the same orange that we used here because they are the same flower and there isn't anything touching that either side that is the same colour. So that, that's really my rule is I don't want the same colour side by side in two things. So I'm going to do exactly the same with this as I did with the other one. Right, so what we've got to think about now is we have these flowers that are touching these flowers. So again, we need to move this out of the way. But also in quite close proximity, we have this, this um, Spanish orange. So that really leaves us the yellow ochre and not a lot else. So I'm going to go ahead with this yellow ochre. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction this time. So I'm going to start the colour at the top of the flower. And as I get to the base, I'm just going to lay it up on the pencil, but I'm going to leave a kind of U shape this time. Because this is quite a dark colour that's next to it, then we can leave a little bit of white there and that's going to stand out quite nicely. And I'm going to do the same with this one. And again, as I make my way towards the base of the flower or the top of the picture, just uh, really down to a tickle. I'm just let, letting the, the pencil sort of glide on the paper by itself. I'm not actually putting any pressure on it. And I can just go back over this bit at the bottom to make it look a bit richer. Do the same with this one. Let's do this one as well. That's, we call That's the hailstone stopped. <laughs> That's a good thing. There we go. Try and put a little bit more colour in there. Okay, good. The colour options for the ends of these flowers, we can use anything apart from the jasmine. So I think I'm going to go with the Spanish orange. So I'll just pop that in there and I'm going to make that really dark, I press really hard so that it stands out nicely against the yellow ochre above it. And I think in the interests of keeping things uniform, I'm going to use the same colour on the other side on the stems of these particular flowers. 
Again, there's not a huge amount we can do here, so I'm really just colouring that in. I'm leaving a tiny bit of white on the left hand side of each of these sections, but that's it really. Okay, so now what we've got here is the first flower. And I'm having, I'm going to use my orange because I haven't used it yet. And I feel that that is a, a suitable, a suitable colour for a, a larger thing in the picture. So I think I'm going to run my gradient from the bottom out to the tip of the, fl the flower, the petal. Uh, so working in my little scumbling motions, scumbling motions, just the same thing. I'm just going to let up as I come nearer the edge and I'm going to leave that tiny white edge there. There we go. That's a really, really vibrant orange colour. I'm not a huge fan of the colour orange, but the, the actual orange is, is pretty orange. <laughs> Which is a good thing if orange is orange. Right, on to the next one. So we're going to do this all the way around all of these petals. Just keep the pencil moving. And let up the pressure as we get to the edge. And you can go back down and go back over your base a bit more. Just to make sure that it's nice and even. That is what we want. Like so. Now they were in the advantageous position here that the next section of the flower is surrounded. So I'm going to take that opportunity to use the jasmine again. So this time I am going to have my gradient run the other way. And I'm going to have the paler part in at the centre. And I'm just doing the same thing as I was doing before. It's the same technique. I'm just starting from the outside and working in. Now because this is a paler colour, you don't have to take as much care. You can be quite quick with it. And... That just takes practice working on this gradient. Once you have good control of your your grip and the pressure that you're putting on the paper, the, doing things like this with a pale colour becomes very easy and you can see I'm scooting through it really quickly. I have been doing it for quite a while though. Right in the very centre there, I think we'll pop a wee bit of the cadmium orange in. Dum, da, da, dum. Just to finish that off. There we go. Okay, so now our colour choices for our leaves here were quite limited. We can only use either the Spanish orange or the yellow ochre. And uh, hmm, it doesn't really matter, to be perfectly honest. I think I'm going to go with the... I think I'm going to go with the yellow ochre. We'll, I, think, yeah, I think we'll go for that. And I'm going to ignore the veins on these leaves. I'm going to treat it as a whole. Oh. I'm going to treat it as a whole leaf, which it is. And I'm going to run my gradient from the bottom. I'm pressing quite heavily. We've got a much larger surface area here, so you can afford to press hard. And you because you have more room to make that gradient, you know, to pull up the pressure on the pencil and really lighten it up. There we go. Now I'm assuming that this leaf is part of the same the same plant and the same flower so I am going to break my own rule and I'm going to do it the same colour. I think it would look a little bit silly if I didn't to be honest. So your gradient's running from right to left here or left to right if you want to do it the other way around that is absolutely fine. I'm just trying to make things easy for you. I'm doing it in the larger part that's got the open space. And there we are that's nice. 
All right then, so at this stage, because we've coloured in this sort of bottom section, it's up to you how you want to move around the actual image itself. I'm going to try and be as methodical as possible. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try and finish the right hand half. Because I'm left handed, I tend to work right to left. Most left handed people will do that. And it's to stop you smudging what's underneath your hand. If you're right handed, you might prefer to start over this side and work your way that way. It's just a habit with me now. It's the same in my sketchbook as well. When I start drawing, if I'm drawing little pictures on one page, I always start in the top right hand corner. Um, it's, see, it's just it's just habit, but it's a good habit to be in. All right, so these stalks of our very dark orange flowers, I'm going to use the traditional bog standard common or garden orange for this. And um, I am going to have the gradient fade in the middle. So I have two lines around the outside, which I'm going to go over again so that they are nice and deep and vibrant. And then using my little circular motion, I'm trying to keep my hand out the way here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to follow that line round and the same on the other side. Now look how far up my pencil I'm holding it. And this is to lighten up the pressure. So I'm going to do the same again and I'm going to I'm going to use even less pressure this time. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to build the colour whilst fading it out into the middle. So that's worked quite nicely, even in that teeny tiny little space. With the outside petals, there's not enough room to do that. So I'm just going to run one line down the outside and then fade that out and just leave a tiny bit of white like so. You can see that there. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. There we are, looks pretty good. I'm also gonna color the stalk in orange as well. We can do the, the leaves a different color on these ones. All right, I'm gonna do the other one the same now. So I'm just doing exactly the same thing. There's the stalk there. So a nice line round the outside and the same on the other side. And then using those circular motions, using less pressure, you're gonna feather that out into the middle, lighter and lighter and lighter. So you've just got that nice hint of white in the middle and then down each outer edge of the parts at the side. So we're, we're sort of filling up this bottom right hand part now. I want to do these leaves as well. Now the, the only colour choice I have here really is the yellow ochre which would tie in with this leaf here that we did earlier uh, because the stock was the stock was one of the yellows. The jasmine's in the background and we're kind of surrounded by the other oranges. So I'm going to keep the leaves kind of uniform as well. I'm going to use the same pattern. So heavy at the bottom and then gradually let up. And with this one here, I'm going to go heavy at this very end tip and make it paler as it goes in towards the stem. So that's that bottom section done. Moving over here now. I'm going to use the bright orange on these little buds. And I'm going to start in here like this because if you remember, we have white on this side of it. So if I put the a heavy layer of the orange beside it, it's going to help that white to pop out. And as I get towards the tip again, I'm just gradating that out. Like so. Same with the other one. Go leaning quite heavily down in those little crevices and then just really lightening up the pressure as I come up towards that tapered tip. Okay, back to my yellow ochre. I'm filling that in quite dark at the base and bringing it out to white round here. I'm just ignoring the lines that are on the leaves, I'm just leaving them there to do their own thing. Here we go. Same with this one in here. Lovely. So this brings me round to this funny shaped flower here. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to use the really dark orange, which is the cadmium orange, to fill in this outside. It's almost like a border on the flower. So what I think I'll do here is use my one pencil gradient to my advantage and make it really heavy in at these sort of crease points where the two petals are meeting. And as I work my way along each of these sort of outside outlines, I'm gonna let up the pressure ever so slightly 
until it's almost nothing, which will be at the peak of the petal, you know, the top of each petal. So if I start on the other side as well and work towards what I've just done, it helps you to keep it even if you do it like that. You know, because you, you can reference what's over the other side and you can kind of even it up and balance it up. So that's what I'm going to do here. There we go. And you can see that that's standing out quite nicely because the rest of the colours are more like a yellowy orange roundabout. So that's just worked in our favour quite nicely there. I'll do this one on this side now. These are quite tight spaces. So once again, if you're not hugely experienced, don't worry too much about going over the lines and don't worry about making everything perfect. The more and more that you practice these things, the better you get at them. And this is, you know, there's some pretty tight spaces in here. Um, so, you know, don't concern yourself too much. It's supposed to be relaxed and you're supposed to enjoy it. Now that leaf, uh, that leaf, oh, here we go, leaves and petals. <sighs> that petal does this in, disappear in behind this leaf but you can see I've just left a tiny hint of white either side just so that the eye gets the impression that it's still following the same pattern as the outside of the rest of the petals and sometimes that's all you need is, is just even a suggestion of what you're what you're trying to achieve rather than going ahead and doing it all right then so I'm going to use the original orange the common or garden orange <laughs> And my gradient's going to go, I've decided to do it this way just because of the shape of the part in the middle. It makes me want to sort of carry it on. So I'm going to have this sort of semi-circular gradient. Again, if you use a light hand, you can spend a while perfecting it and, you know, tweaking it and building it up. And that's really, that's the lovely thing about pencils. That's why I enjoy working with pencils so much. There we go. That's turned out quite nice. So I'll do the other one so that it matches. So I'm pressing a little bit harder in at the base here, still using my circular motion. And I'm just going back and forth and going over what I've done. And as I come out towards the edge of the petal, I am releasing the pressure on the pencil to almost nothing, uh, to the point where that I'm just really letting the pencil run over the paper by itself. I'm not really, not really helping it along. I'm just sort of wiggling it about a bit. <laughs> that sounded a bit wrong, didn't it? <laughs> Never mind, never mind. Okay, I've just realised as well, I've forgotten the stock to this, which I wanted to do in this sort of outside outline colour. So I'm just going to stick that in there. Stick, get it? Ah! Oh, I know, I'm not funny. Right, back to, back to orange, orange. And I'm going to do the same thing here. this one match. Now as before it disappears in behind this leaf but as long as we give the impression and the you know the the, the eye can see that that gradient is happening you know it, our brain will fill in the blanks kind of thing. Does it for you. There you go. And in the centre here I'm going to use the jasmine again. I'm taking the opportunity to use the jasmine whenever I can because we did use it in the background so you know you're not going to get a huge number of opportunities thereafter to use it. So there we go. I've just left a little white border. I've just gone in and pressed pressed hard all the way through that there. Um, you know, it's it, because it's quite a pale colour, you can get away with that. So that's a nice, quick and easy thing to do. If we move up here to this little flower, I am going to use the orange on the outside here. So I think I'll have my one pencil gradient working in towards the centre this time. Make that a bit darker on the outside. Circular motions to blend it in. And bring that right down there. Do the same on this side. And for this little bit in the middle, I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow ochre and then I can do these back petals which I'm just going to go inside out to the top. For these larger leaves I'm going to use a combination of the 
Spanish orange and the yellow ochre. I'm going to run the yellow ochre down the centre like this. Again, just leaving a little sort of white spine along the top there. And I'm going to do the same for this one as well. I'm going to do these as a pair. In fact, this one as well. Why not? And then I'm going to pay attention to the pattern on the leaves this time. So starting in at the base, pressing hard, I'm going to let up my pressure as I work out towards the edge. And I'm going to do that on every single part of this leaf individually. It's good practice and it looks better. See, rather than just running over the whole thing in one go, you can get a little bit of variation. And it just looks much tidier. There we go. Do the other side now. Now that section is just going to be all the one colour because it's tucked in behind the other leaf. Just remember to let up that pressure as you get towards the other edge. You can always go back over it further down like I'm doing now if you feel you've been too light-handed or you want it to be a bit more, you know, a bit more vibrant or a bit darker. That's absolutely fine. But start as you mean to go on. If you start off with a light hand, you can build your colours up. This is something else that I say all the time to everyone in all my videos. If you lay down a heavy hand to begin with, it's very difficult to raise... Whereas if you start off lightly, you can always add to it. I'm going to use the yellow ochre just for these small leaves here. And I'm going to have the same as the, the bud that I did up here. So what I've done is I've outlined it there and then I'm going to lighten up in towards the centre. Like so. Do the same with this little one here. I'm going to finish off this leaf up here as well using the same technique as I have the one underneath. So heavy in at the base there, lighten up the pressure. If you need to go slower than this to do your gradients, that is absolutely fine. You're better to go slowly and do them accurately and have a, you know, a nice, a nice smooth finish than try and rush them. Uh, you know, you can always pause the video. That's the, the lovely thing about, about YouTube. All right, so it's, here I'm going the opposite way with the gradient because it's against the white of the paper. So I want that on the outside. I want the color on the outside. And I'll have the white area in nearer the middle. There we go. Back to the yellow ochre for these leaves here. And I'm just going to do one side like that. And the other side like so. This one feels a bit left out, I think, because the other leaves are all in the yellow ochre colour. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. And what I'll do is, starting in here, pressing quite heavily, I'm just going to let that out about one third of the way. And then I'm going to do the same from the other end. There we go. And then with this side, I'm going to do this all as one section because they really are too fiddly to do individually. So I'm running my pencil down the centre of the leaf and then have my gradient run the other way. That makes it just a bit more interesting as well. Looking at the balance of the picture now, there isn't too much of this dark cadmium red. So I'm going to utilise that in these petals on this large flower at the top. Now taking into account what I've done with this one here, I am going to reverse my gradient so the darkest part's going to be in the outside of the petals. So I'm just going to get started here and I do always run my pencil along the line art on the page first and get that nice sort of deep starting line and then use my little circular motions just to feather it out. 
because these petals are a bit bigger then I am going to go back over it a considerable number of times so that I've got the right depth of colour and we've got that nice vibrancy that we want. So we'll just keep going here. I don't need to explain the technique to you now. I think you've I think you've all got the hang of it by now. It is important to keep going back though, as I say, especially in these larger areas where you know there's there's a lot more sort of paper space to cover. So you do tend to have to go back over to get the the right depth of colour and the right smoothness. I'm going to do exactly the same with all the rest of these petals so I can speed this next part up. So following the previous theme of utilising the jasmine, which is my palest colour, I'm going to use that on this middle section here. And I'm going to kind of ignore these tiny little dots. They are far too fiddly. So I'm just going to go all the way around the outside, like so. And again, I'm going to get a nice deep colour on the go all the way around and bearing in mind what I said before about using the lighter pencils you don't have to take as much care and it's just because the eye doesn't pick up on the colour the same. I'm just going to use the cadmium orange again in the centre here as well and I'm just going to have a bit of fun with this. You do need quite a sharp pencil here. So uh, you can see there I have quite a, a pointy point on my pencil and what I'm going to do is each of these sort of cake like sections I'm going to alternate them. So I'm going to start darken it in at the centre and work my way out in this section and then the next section I'm going to do the opposite thing. It is a really tiny space and don't feel that you have to utilise this but it just adds a bit of variation and a bit of fun to what you're doing. Might need to get your specs on for this. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect, I mean it is such a small space. There we go. If you're feeling particularly adventurous as well, you can use this cadmium yellow just to colour in these little circles. And again, you're not going to be doing anything with those because they are so teeny tiny. But just if you want to add that contrast there, feel free to add those little dots in. So I'm going to go to the Spanish orange now. And I'm going to work on these three flowers here. And again, just for continuity, I'm going to try and keep them the same. So it's up to you now at this stage, you know, we've, we've been a little bit creative and you've seen a lot of it. So it's up to you how you want to deal with these. So I'm going to go darken at the center and out to pale at the edges of these. Get this nice and bright and vibrant. So it just pops out at the edge of the paper here. I apologise if you can hear a bit of rumbling in the background. I have uh, the two collies, the pup and the older dog, and they're playing here in the cave, which is fine. I think they're having fun. <laughs> I'm just going to speed the rest of this up because I'm just going to colour in these two exactly the same way as I've done that one. Now thinking about what's going on down here, we are very limited as to what we can use because of the colours that we have on all sides. So we have the we have the Spanish orange and we have the 
cadmium orange and we also have the yellow ochre. Now these leaves here, we've got a bit more play in them because they're only touching one or the other but I wanted to keep these the same colour. I'm going to use the orange on these leaves and again we're in quite a tight space so I'm going to start the gradient down here and I'm just going to feather it out towards the outside. Keep it nice and bright in the middle and I'm going to do the same with this one. So you can run your pencil down that middle line and then you can feather it out like so. All right then, and for this outline here on this one, I am going to use the Spanish orange again because we now have a gap and it's not touching anything else that's in the Spanish orange. So I'm going to go in the same vein as I did with this one and I'm going to have the highlight at the apex of each of the curves. So they're going to be really dark in here and I'm just going to lighten it out as it comes round. Like this. This one's going to be quite tight because it's quite close together. So I'm just going to put a little V in there. Like so. much more room here that's probably going to disappear in there because it's hiding in behind that other leaf petal <laughs> I don't know why I've got this thing about leaves and petals all right then that looks pretty good so let's use the jasmine inside these larger sections of these petals <laughs> and we'll start dark at the outside and we'll come in to a paler color near the center and again, that's just so you've got that contrast between the white area on the outside and the colour in the actual petal itself. We'll do the same with these bottom ones. You've got a bit more room for manoeuvre here, so you can take your time a bit more. As I say, again, because it's the paler colour, it's not, not such a huge deal. Make sure you get your layers in and go back over it so you get that nice rich colour. There we go. And I think we'll use the bright orange in the middle as well. And it's quite a tight space so we'll just go from the middle out. That's the easiest way to do when you don't have a lot of room. So down here I'm going to use the cadmium orange on the outside. And I'll go in the opposite direction from what I've done here. So I want the colour on the outside at its most vibrant. And we'll work our way in. Now I just realised there's a tiny little gap in there. That should be, technically be jasmine. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my pencil in there, but let's go for it. There we go. <laughs> you saw me do it. I did do it. So I think we'll use the yellow ochre in these centre parts and I'm going to work from the middle out. Just like this. Taking each little section at a time, each segment. Sometimes when you do it this way, you go back on it and you look at and maybe one or two of your sections look a bit uneven and you can just go back over them until you've got everything exactly the way you want. I'll just put a little spot of the orange in the middle there. Make that pop out. All right, that's looking good now. And uh, I think just while I've got this orange here, I'm going to use that on these uh, little yellow flowers at the top. And all I'm going to do is put a little C shape like this and then very, very lightly blend out that edge just to leave a little bit of white 
at one side. I naturally always put that highlight in the top left hand. I do like a backward C shape. If you're right handed, you might want to go the other way and make an actual C and have your, have your white spot in the top right hand corner. We'll do these stocks in this orange color as well. Okay, so we've got the yellow ochre. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use this. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to go Spanish orange just because I like it. To do these leaves here. And I am going to have the colour at the top, which is poking out into the white. Again, that is done deliberately. And I'm just going to gradate that down towards the flower. And we'll have the white near the, the flower rather than on the outside. I just realised you didn't see how that was out of shot. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> So I started up at the tip here and made that really dark and then I've just gradated it out towards the, the outside edge of the flower. Now these leaves here could belong to this one or they could belong to this one here because this leaf looks different. So I'm going to do these in a different colour again and for that I am going to use the yellow ochre. And I'm going to radiate out from the base of the flower this time using that circular motion you can see it's I'm using it quite quickly now again that is just a practiced hand you may have to go slower which is absolutely fine that is a-okay once you've had a bit of practice and you've you know you, you've spent a bit of time with your pencils and done a few pictures you will speed up naturally it just kind of happens all right so the last thing we've got is these two diddly little flowers down here and I'm going to use my cadmium orange and I'm just going to fill in those little semicircular shapes at the top. Again, there's not much room for manoeuvre there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dark on the left hand side and have them graduate to a lighter colour on the right hand side. So down that left hand edge with a nice heavy pencil and then in your circular motion, just work over to the other side, letting up the pressure. And we'll do this one as well. There we go. Right. And there you have it. There is a finished image using a limited colour palette. And this particular occasion, it's all the same hues. And I have literally used five pencils to do that. So you can see it has quite a nice effect. It's very cohesive. And that's kind of the effect that you're looking for when you've got a limited palette. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this left hand one in the blue pencils that I picked out at the start. I'm going to do that off camera and I will show you at the end the finished product just so you can see something, you know, a little bit of variation on the idea. I have finished scribbling with my blue pencils and here you can see the completed circle using my five blue coloured pencils and maybe give you some inspiration to go and try one for yourself. If you're interested and you have Prismacolor pencils, the pencils that I used for the blue circlet were Cloud Blue, which is PC1023. I used Caribbean Sea, which is PC1103. I have Denim Blue, which is PC1101. Cerulean Blue, which is PC103. And finally, my favourite, Peacock Blue, which is PC1027. So I hope this video has been helpful to those of you who are new to colouring and you've maybe learned something from it today. Please keep your eyes peeled for part two. We're going to be using a limited palette that encompasses two or three different colours, probably three I would think. That's a little bit more complicated but I'm also going to explain how I've picked out the colours to go together for that particular palette. So if that's something you're interested in, keep your eyes peeled on the channel and we shall see you next time in the cave. If you have liked this and it's something that you want to try for yourself, I do always list all my materials down in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you do decide you want to purchase, you could do it through that affiliate link. And what it does is it drops a few pennies into the channel and helps me out a little bit, but it's at no extra cost to yourself. So anybody that uses that it is much appreciated here at the cave. See you in the next video, guys. Bye bye for now.